afternoon and assalamualaikum everyone. Welcome to another episode of Quick and Easy Cooking with Mimi, that's me, and the world's best all-in-one super kitchen machine, the Thermomix. If you're new to Thermomix, Thermomix is, as I mentioned, a super kitchen machine that does so many functions. It can chop, it can blend, it can stir, it can saute, it can mix batter, it can knead dough, it can make pasta, make smoothies, make juices, it can make soups and stews, it can make ice cream, it can grind coffee beans, it can crush ice, it can do sous vide so that you can have tender steaks, you can even make yogurt with it, cheeses, and even make sugar, caramel, sugar work like caramel, lollipops, fudge candies, butterscotch sauce, that sort of, that sort of thing. So it can do so many, so many wonderful things and it simplifies everything and it even provides guided cooking through its database of more than 58,000 recipes. And that's what we're going to do today. We're just going to show a little bit of what it can do. We are making pineapple tarts. Yesterday I already made the pineapple jam using two small Malaysian pineapples which weighed about 880 or one kilo after it was peeled and the ice were removed and then we we blended it in like five seconds and then we cooked it for about 40 minutes on its own i left it on its own once i put in all of the ingredients and if i forget about it it's fine because it shuts down by itself so today we're going to continue with that recipe it's right here it's called pineapple tarts and the nice thing about it is when you tap on this arrow down here not only does it show the ingredients and the steps but you can actually go to the exact step where you want to begin. In this case, I want to start doing the tart pastry. I'm not going to do the jam anymore because I've got it right here. So I'm just going to tap it here. And we start with the first step that involves the pastry. So I can just easily sit here while we do the pastry. So we start off with a clean bowl. And it says here to put in 350 grams of plain flour and it's in grams. Normally when you are baking you would be so stressed you'd have to look for your weighing scale and then you have to figure out whether you have battery or not. With the Thermomix it's all in here. All you have to do is tap on tear to reset the weighing scale to zero. And I've got my flour in here. All-purpose flour or wheat flour or tepung gandum, tepung biasa. This is what it is. Okay, so we just dump the whole thing in. It should be 350. I measured it earlier give or take one or two grams with a fan and all, very sensitive weighing scale. And then 20 grams of milk powder. I use full cream. You can buy these from um, baking ingredient shops or you can use uh, one of those brands that are sold in the supermarket, but go for full cream because the others, they put in some other additives that I'm not sure of. Okay, and then next, you just tap on next as though you've never done it before. You just tap next, 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 next. So the next one is 20 grams of, of sugar, very little. This is the reason why when you make your pineapple jam, you have to adjust the sugar depending on the sweetness of your pineapple because you need to have some sweetness in the jam to complement your pastry, which is quite bland. Okay? Because for 350 grams of flour, you only have 20 grams of sugar. That's very little. And then we have a pinch of salt. I'm using Himalayan pink rock salt. And then it says to insert the measuring cup, this is the measuring cup, into the mixing bowl lid. And that means to cover it. And then we tap next. So now it automatically locks the arms. And you know when it does that, it's going to go into turbo mode. So it's like if you're using a mixer, it will go into pulse. Except that this pulse part is only two seconds. So I'm just going to twist the button. It already set for me two seconds. And then it says one more time. And then next, I add in unsalted butter. It's going to unlock now. That's part of the safety features. The first part was actually to sift. The, 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 the turbo two second thing that you saw earlier was sifting. It was just to mix in all of our dry ingredients, which was the flour, the sugar, and the salt. And now it's actually... 
actually going to add in the butter, which I've kept cold. So for the butter, you have to keep it very cold and cut into cubes, one centimeter, because you want the dough to be easy to work with. If you want to weigh, you can weigh, but I already pre-weighed when I cut these into cubes earlier. So this should be 250 unsalted. Because the danger of using salted butter is because sometimes certain batches are a bit too salty and it can affect your pastry. Especially if you're working with sweet pastry. Okay, so next. Now it says to cover again. And we do just that. And it's gonna mix this for five seconds on speed five. Next, we add two egg yolks that I previously separated before the show. But before I do that, I'm just gonna show you how wonderful the dough is. This part is usually very tricky if you're using an ordinary mixer. Look at this, isn't this beautiful? you get the bread crumbs. This is what they call bread crumbs texture. Normally this is so difficult to do when you're doing it manually because the butter will melt very easily, especially when your hands are warm or you're in a humid country. But because we're using a thermomix in only five seconds, it's mixed in so you get perfect texture. And now I'm just gonna add my egg yolks. When you're working with uh, pastry, you have to work very fast because we don't want the butter to melt. That it's ha easier to handle our dough later. Okay, and then to cover again, and it's gonna mix it. It's gonna knead it for 20 seconds. It's already set for us on the clock, 20 seconds, and all I need to do is to turn the knob to activate the kneading mode indicated here by the wheat sign, and just like that. Super easy. Now, if you want to know what goes next, you can even tap on this. Uh, there, there are three, but three dots on the side, and you can look at the recipe detail, and then you can see what's coming next while it's doing the kneading for us. Oh, it's done. I, I wasn't done reading it, and the, dough, <laughs> the kneading is done. So now it says to cover, uh, to transfer the dough to a bowl, cover with cling film and refrigerate for half an hour, and to shape the dough into a long log and cut into small pieces, about 10 grams. Okay, so this part normally is when your dough is, um, it needs to be firm enough to handle, but because my dough, my, my butter is cold, I have a feeling I won't need to chill my dough. Because it's so beautiful, can you see that? And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to work with the dough in small batches. If you're not used to working with pastry, I would recommend that you do this. So you do a little bit at a time, so it's easier for you to handle. Okay, so I have a small amount of dough. And no need, you, you avoid working too hard with it. Avoid overworking the dough. We just want it to come together. And this is when a silicone mat, like a thermomat, comes in very handy. Especially the, silic the thermomat, thermomat because for some reason I find that it's less sticky as compared to normal silicone mats. And for this one, I'm going to use my normal cutter. Some people, they like to, I think the, the, the sample that uh, Cookie Do is telling us, they want it to have the balls. It's like you wrap, you wrap the balls, you wrap the jam in balls, but I prefer my family, we like it to be open. So what we do, I forgot to get my rolling pin. Where are you, rolling pin? Okay, my mini fondant rolling pin. So I'm just gonna roll it about let me see, use this thickness, and then I'm just going to cut it, cut the flower part, and then use the top to press the design, and then peel it off gently, 
And voila, you have your flower-like design. And I can actually arrange it on my baking tray. And then I'll continue doing this. It's very easy to do because my dough is perfect. I don't have to refrigerate it. If you find it challenging, then maybe you can put it in the fridge for a while. And then what I have here, I already pre-measured my jam. I used a half tablespoon scoop so that I could get these little balls of um, jam. If you want to form them into perfect balls, up to you. They're quite sticky. I personally don't like handling it. You can wear a glove or something. And then you can just roll your pineapple jam or you can just scoop it into oh my I think I put too much in fact I'm gonna have it <laughs> I haven't done this in a year people so I think half a teaspoon is too much I think one teaspoon would be better okay I'm gonna get my chopping board because I cannot I cannot use a knife on my thermal mat so I'm going to fold this into half. There, it fits perfectly. So I would say about one teaspoon of jam. Can you see this? And then up to you if you want to put those little hearts or little shapes on top. And another tip I forgot to do, I'm supposed to show you how to do it, is to dip your cutter into flour. Where are you, flour? Hang on, let me grab my flour. mom's been busy this morning rearranging my kitchen so, <laughs> so I put my just dip it into flour so it doesn't stick and then you press the pattern part on it and it comes off easier yes much much easier you can also put flour on the other side can you see it? Should I move my Thermomix? I don't have my laptop with me today, so I'm just gonna move everything to the side so you can see it. There you go. So I'm gonna dip both this and this so that when I, then we tap it off so that when we use it to cut, the dough doesn't stick to the mold. So it looks like this, and then we take our filling, which I made too big. I'm just gonna plop it on top. Just make it to slightly circular shape, and then up to you if you want to put like little dots on top. So people like to make tiny flowers. And then sometimes you may find that you have an extra, you have too much pastry and not enough jam. So when that happens, I can actually show you a way of turning the extra dough into what we call putri salji. So what we do is just to make it come together set this aside okay this one is getting a bit difficult to work with so I'm gonna put this this part in the fridge I'm gonna get a fresh batch make it easier to work with okay so the fresh batch is still cold so when I roll it it doesn't stick to my rolling pin if it sticks you can actually dip your rolling pin in the flour as well but the reason why I like it small, so it's easier to dip in flour. And then you can use um, your cookie cutters. I have here a star and a bear. 
and then you can just cut your shapes close together so that you don't have a lot of wastage and then you bake it and then when you're done baking you dip it in powdered sugar and that's what we call putri salji the pastry is very very nice it's very very soft and it melts in your mouth it's crunchy but it melts in your mouth i don't know how to explain that i have my bear i have my star and i'm gonna make more of my tarts you can also get your kids to help you do this have your assembly line once again just uh, be prepared to put your your dough several times in the fridge because when they start getting creative it, it tends to take a while longer to get the job done and you'll find that your dough might be start getting a bit too soft to work with so yeah making another one put a bit too much flour there but it's fine it's gonna be finished by tonight i'm sure super easy to make normally i used to buy this for like i don't know how much is it now eh? i haven't bought pineapple tarts in a long long time but these are usually very expensive especially when the baker uses pure butter uh, if you buy outside you're not guaranteed they would say it's made of butter but actually it's buttercup and i'm telling you buttercup is not butter so with this one when you make it yourself you save money and you are also guaranteed that you are using the best ingredients for your family and the danger in margarine is the way that it is processed because um, they use hydrogenated hydrogenated fat it means they're using a special process to make the fat to make the palm oil or vegetable oil stay solid in room temperature this is why butter is a challenge to work with because when it gets a bit too hot the butter starts to to melt but shortening and margarine they don't so just imagine what it does inside your body when you know it goes into your body i shudder to think what it, i've been feeding myself all these years but this is yeah this is why i try to invest a bit more you get to enjoy the food a bit better because it tastes better better quality better taste and you know you know what they say if you think good health is expensive try illness try getting sick it's a lot more expensive so as you start to have diabetes and uh, high blood pressure and all sorts of things then that's when you realize that actually it's worth investing in your family's health so just like this i'm gonna bake this batch just to just so we can have some while i make some more because i know many of you are interested in seeing the finished product and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna spread it out so it will bake faster so we have a small batch here while i work on another batch Preheated the oven to 170 and then I'm gonna get um, another another baking tin while I put in this dough in the fridge Way. because if you take out everything in one go then it starts to get too soft and difficult to work with and it's more challenging especially if you only make cookies once a year or if you don't cook at all so 
So I'm giving you these small tips to help it make it easier for you. Channel your inner kitchen goddess. It's not that difficult. We're gonna try something with the with the balls as well, just just for the fun of it. This one side is plain circle. I should have floured this better, but it's okay. So I'm gonna try making one that's uh, in the shape of a ball. First, I need to this into two. Circle, another circle. By the time you eat it, you, you won't see the, the imperfections anymore. Unless you're selling it, then of course it's a different story. Then you have to be more particular to the design. Okay, so I'm going to make one that's uh, a ball. So I'm also going to take about half of what I did earlier. Form it into a ball and cover it with the dough. This one, I would recommend that you put egg wash if you want it to like uh, be golden brown. So you can have a simple ball like this, just to give you ideas. What else? Yeah, more of the stars for our putri salji, our sugar cookies. Actually, literally, it means uh, snow princess. So if you have Elsa cutters lying around, it's a good time to use it. There you go. Okay, I'm going to get another batch that's easier to work with. You'll see that the one that you put in the fridge, it the butter will harden slightly and that's what makes it easier to work with. So meanwhile, I'm keeping an eye on our cookies because they will bake quite fast. About 10 to 15 minutes, I would expect. You get the satisfaction of making your own cookies, of giving your family the best, of knowing exactly what goes into your cookies. And then, you know, you can have variety. You can have, after this, I'm gonna make chocolate chips, and then any extra egg whites will become meringue kisses. And then maybe just butter cookies what we did the other day, or Anzac cookies, which are a favorite of the Queen of Malaysia. We have them in cookie dough. Anzac actually it requires um, oatmeal and golden syrup, which you can make with a Thermomix as well. So you don't have to buy anymore. It's a wonderful thing about the Thermomix, you can do everything yourself. If you want spices, if they want a pumpkin spice, there's pumpkin spice in here. If you want um, Arabic mix spice, it's all in here. You want harissa, it's probably here. It's it's such a treasure trove of information. And just like this, so easy. Suddenly I'm making my own pineapple tarts. Super easy, you should do this also. dough comes together so beautifully because it only takes literally seconds to mix the butter and the flour. And then when you when you roll it, don't don't uh, press too hard, just lightly. And minimize touching it because your hands generate heat. And the heat from your hands will make the butter melt even faster and make your dough softer. So I need to work fast. I'm going to 
check on our cookies. As you can see, my Thermomix is shutting down. Not ready yet. So this is part of its um, energy saving and at the same time, safety feature. If you don't use it after some time, it will shut down by itself. So you don't have to worry about don't have to worry about electricity consumption because it's very very energy efficient it doesn't use your typical uh, coil heating mechanism that's used by electric stoves and and um, rice cookers it's a totally different and um, technology and get you an idea in a one hour is something like 14 cent Malaysia because when you are using the Thermomix without heat it's only 500 watts and when you're using it with heat it's only 1000 watts as compared to say a hair dryer which can be 2200 to 2500 watts So people, one question people ask me is, how's my electricity bill? I said, no problem. I'm, in fact, I think I'm spending less on electricity than when I was spending on gas. Because um, LPG prices have gone up recently. And it's like, we use it up so much. I don't know why. It's hard to track my usage and it's such a pain when you're in the middle of something and you run out of gas. Alhamdulillah, in Malaysia, the electricity is not a problem. So blackouts are not really an issue. And just like this, my parts are almost done. Super easy. Reminds me of the time we, yeah, last year I made something fun. Instead of just making the normal round ones, I, I dyed it a bit orange and I made it in the shape of mandarin orange. It was very cute. So we have another batch ready. Once that one's done, I'm going to put it in the oven. I'm just going to take a peek now. It's a bit more, about five minutes more. So while waiting, I'm going to make a few more cookies. Almost done, just a bit more, just to make it slightly brown. Slightly. Because it looks nice when it's a bit reddish. So while waiting, I'm gonna make a couple more tarts. It's literally like playing. <laughs> So we have stocks of Thermomix right now. If you want to have Thermomix before a year, send me a private message. If you want it before a year, and send it over by next week. Especially if you're paying in cash and it's easier to process because we don't have to wait for the bank thing with credit cards is you will need to go to the bank for approval. Here you go. Super easy. While waiting, I can easily make more. I just have to figure out where to fit it into my baking tray. See if you're mixing the, the, the dough by by hand or using your mixer, 
from my experience, it's very difficult to work with because there's a lot of heat generated. And I've tried all sorts of tricks, like I would grate cold butter into the flour. And always I end up having to chill the dough. It's just not possible to work immediately because Malaysia is so humid and butter as well. Butter is very sensitive to heat. So I think it should be done by now. I'm gonna wash my hands another time. Follow me because I'm I'm used to handling heat, even though it's quite hot. Okay, let me rephrase that. It's extremely hot. <laughs> so we have our just grab a spatula or something, and yay! We have one teeny tiny bear. Careful of the silicone mat, it's super hot. It's much hotter than, than the baking tin. And just like that, by just playing with the dough, we were literally just playing with the dough, we get a batch of pineapple tarts and a bit of putri salji, which I'm gonna dip later on, this one, these cookies. I'm gonna dip in um, icing sugar. And just like that, it's done, super easy. So get your Thermomix now. Let me know in, in the comments or in the DM and so that I can reach you. I hope you had fun today and I hope this will inspire you to make your pineapple tarts this weekend. Have fun. Thank you so much. Join me again 6 p.m. tomorrow. Live, same place. Salamat wa buka puasa. Salamat alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.